Over the weekend, leftist candidate Gustavo Petro won the presidential election in Colombia. This is a pretty big deal, especially considering the recent history of Colombia and the type of austerity measures that were both threatened by and implemented by its you know, incumbent president, Duque. Now, who is he and why does David Frum dislike him? Well. Before we get to David Frum, here's some context on the Colombian presidential election. Gustavo Petro, a former rebel who rallied young and poor voters with promises to transform an unequal society, was elected Colombia's first leftist president on Sunday in a resounding rejection of the political establishment that had ruled the South American nation for two centuries. So what did he pledge to do? How did he galvanize voters in Colombia? And I should note, he ran for president in 2018, he lost, but he did win 8 million votes. So you started seeing the beginning stages of Colombian voters really starting to reject the Colombian establishment, political establishment and wanting to edge closer to you know, a political program that actually looks out for people instead of abandons them and crushes them with austerity measures. Now Petro had pledged to create a universal public health Healthcare system, okay, end the nation's war on drugs, make public universities free for everyone. Sounds very Bernie esque here. Uh, establish a minimum wage for single mothers. He also wanted to raise taxes specifically on the wealthy and also boost the Colombian agriculture industry. And one of the Colombian citizens who was quoted on this said, quote, we've been subjected to the right and the extreme right for more than 200 years and things are bad, 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 we need a change. However, I should note, you know, Petro is taking measures to kind of like avoid being portrayed as a member of the far left. He says, well, Petro gave a frank message to his critics, from the arena stage on Sunday night, quote, we will develop capitalism in Colombia. I don't love that statement because that's really going against what the voters were galvanized by, which is, you know, real social spending that looks out for workers in Colombia, that looks out for the little guy. Now, here's another reason why the Colombian presidential election was historic. Petro's running mate, environmental activist, friend Francia Marquez, will become the first black woman to serve as Colombia's vice president, spurring expectations that the new government will move to tackle surging deforestation in the Colombian Amazon and curb the nation's reliance on planet warming fossil fuels. Now, the former president of Colombia, and we should be clear on who he is, Ivan Ivan Duque Marquez, is leaving office with a very, very low approval rating. I remember two years ago, it was like reported as record lows, 32%. Well, it's down to the 20s now. And David Frum loved him, right? Because this is a guy who was very friendly to US business interests, and I'll get to the details of that. But David Frum recently published a piece in The Atlantic titled, The President Who Did Everything Right and Got No Thanks. <laughs> was that was his headline in the Atlantic? David Frum, of course, the was the he very man about George W. Bush, <laughs> yeah, very man who um, essentially crafted, you know, he uh. built that axis of evil foreign policy narrative that Bush used to implement war crimes. Yeah, that to guy. be honest, the 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 right wingers from the Bush years. Who have been rehabilitated since? Um, I feel like David Frum is the one that gets under my skin the most because he does sort of engender this this veneer of respectability amongst a bunch of libs, and it gets on my nerves to the point where he's got a big perch at the the allegedly ultra liberal Atlantic Magazine, right? <laughs> um, again, this is the guy. Who helped W craft the agenda that lied us into two wars, cost us trillions of dollars, millions of Iraqi and Afghani lives. Um, just horrible stuff that this guy is directly involved in. And now he gets to tell us who are great presidents for the Colombian people. And you know what's so funny to me, Anna? It's like 
back in the days how these types would justify their knee jerk opposition to anything left wing um, on this side of the world, especially in Latin and Central America. It's like, oh, the Soviets are coming and they're gonna creep into Colombia and then they're gonna make it to Mexico and then they're gonna kill everybody in Texas, right? Like that would be the justification of it. There's no Soviet Union. We know Russia is nowhere near any of this stuff. They can't afford to get into these kinds of problems with us. Yet this, this just, Arch just nemesis of any sort of left anywhere persists. And then, of course, you know, a clown like David Frum is gonna be a mouthpiece to that every freaking time. Yeah, you know, you just reminded me of something. So last week, I was out for a few days because I was covering the Summit of the Americas, which took place in Los Angeles. And I wanna be clear about what that summit was about. So we might publish one interview that I did there that I think is worth watching, to be quite honest with you. And it's because the whole point of that event was to bring Western business interests, particularly US business interests, into Latin American countries. That was the whole point. That was the whole point of the summit. And anyone who tells you otherwise is lying to you. There were business interests there, they were present. They were very clearly trying to negotiate with heads of state and government leaders in an effort to essentially pave the way for business interests to be, to really like, blossom in those countries. And I say blossom as a euphemism. In reality, a lot of times when you see that, local communities get destroyed, countries get destroyed. One of the problems that's currently taking place in Colombia is that you know you have the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, doing what it does in most other foreign countries that it loans money to. They're essentially international loan sharks. And they loan money to these countries. And then they point a finger and say, but, but, then they're high interest loans. We need austerity. You need to cut spending on social programs for your people. And so Colombia has been struggling with that. I mean, just terrible, right? And so it, it's no wonder that the people of Colombia are like, hey, I'm being screwed here. And we've been screwed by the same political ideology that has essentially taken our resources and funneled it to the top, funneled it to business interests. Um, you know, in, in his article, uh, David Frum writes, Duque upheld Colombia's trading relationship with the United States, because that's really what the priority is for these people, right? Trading relationship with the United States ratified the US Colombia Free Trade Agreement. And that entered into force in 2012. Thanks to this agreement, Colombia has enhanced its traditional exports of oil and coffee. The country now supplies three quarters of all the cut flowers sold in the United States. So it's like, I mean, he, he's so transparent about it. Like me, 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 US business interests, that's all that matters. Who cares about the local population there, people living in Colombia? feeling absolutely crushed by the economic policies that have been implemented by a president like Duque. And it's not like they can show like just a trillion examples of American companies going into these foreign places and just making it so much better for everyone. That's not the case. And again, it's not like they go in there exploit these people and it's just like, all right, I'm gonna get fat off of this land. I'm gonna enrich myself. It's not like they ever give any give backs or concessions. In fact, oftentimes the reason why they wanna go into these countries is cuz they can be more exploitative than they can be in America. That's why they're always anxious to get into these new markets cuz they could just extract as much value and never do any give backs by way of taxes on their on their profits and just like bro like <laughs> you're getting filthy rich off of these people at least you could give some of this stuff back and enhance their lives um but no if you're not if you're not just making money hand over fist you're not being a good business person and everybody knows that yep and look, we're out of time for this story, but I highly recommend you guys check out the interview that Michael Brooks did with journalist Ahmed Kabalo. They specifically talked about the type of 
basically the type of benefits for US business and interests under the leadership of Duque. He did a lot of great work when it came to these types of stories. So definitely check that out. All right, for now though, let's move on to some more domestic politics with Lauren Boebert. And no, unfortunately, we will not be talking about her alleged the allegations about her escorting and, and abortions, uh, that hasn't been confirmed. Uh, but I will state again that she has been accused of such things. Not that there's anything wrong with sex work, but it is wrong when you're a massive hypocrite who wants to um, you know, rain terror on sex workers and essentially ban people from being able to practice reproductive rights.